Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to show how can we implement the Modbus TCP server function in the Rockwell Allen Branley Compact Logic Controller. And in this video, I will use 1769 L33 this controller and implement the Modbus TCP server. And to implement this uh, Modbus TCP server function, we can download the AOI from Rockwell Automation website. So you can go to the rockwellautomation.com and from this search, and you can browse Modbus TCP and find out this uh, sample code, and then you will find this AOI. The current version, that is 2.02. .02. So you can download this. Within this AOI, it includes the Modbus TCP client and the Modbus TCP server function. Modbus TCP server function, that means, so once we implement this Modbus TCP server function, the Modbus TCP server will run as a slave, prepare the data. From the client side, the client will send the function code, for example, the 03. 03 will read the data from this server to the client. If the function code that is a 16, so the client side will send the data to the server side. So the Modbus TCP server, that means this is the passive side. Basically, we also call that slave side, okay? After we download the AOI, and you firstly need to install the execution file, and then you unzip the file, you will find Compact Logics Modbus TCP AOI. And in this folder, it includes Modbus TCP client and Modbus TCP server. And I showed one video before, it showed how can we implement the Modbus TCP client. And in this video, we will mainly focus on this, Modbus TCP server. So this is a slave side. And you can also look at this menu. So basically, to implement this function, that is easy. So, and the menu only have 16 pages. So that is this menu. And if we scroll down, there are some notes here. So firstly, we need to check out to implement the Modbus TCP slave function or client function, we need to check out this uh, controller, this list, some old version, compact logics or control logics, they don't support that. So you can check out this link. So if you search this ID, and you will find the sample code for Modbus master and slave. And from this link, it explained for this version 2.0 or later this version. So this is the list that shows the controller that support this AOI. Basically, all the new version controller, they support this AOI. Keep in mind this. And another thing we really need to take care, that is this. To implement this function block, the Modbus TCP server, it take one to three K bytes memory on the controller. If we add one more instant, it will add 40 K memory. Some lower end controller, it only have around 400 K bytes the memory. So this one, two, three really take maybe 30% of this uh, controller. So you really need to take care about this. From the Modbus TCP side, the common used function code we will use, that is uh, 03 and 16. From the server side, basically we are waiting for the Modbus client side to read the data or write the data to send those code. So in this test, I will use the model scan, the software run as a client side. I will show how can we send the data or read the data from the client side. And keep in mind one thing, because we download the file, the AOI file, so to use that file from the run, we will import the run, import this L5X, this file, into our program. And also keep in mind this, is recommend to add this AOI into the periodic task, for example, with a rate of higher 10 milliseconds. So in this video, I will show how can we create a periodic task and how can we implement this. All right, let's go to the Studio 5000 side. Okay, we will use the Studio 5000 and import this TCP server, import this Modbus TCP server, just run. Okay, firstly, let's open the RS Link Classic, this software, and browse the controller we have. So in this case, my controller, the IP address 192.168.1.101. Uh, so this is my PLC, it will run Modbus TCP server. Okay, so let's open, double click Studio 5000 for our project name. Compact Logics Modbus TCP server. Okay, that is a slave. So firstly, let's create one periodic task. If we quickly reveal the existing main task, that is a continuous task, 
if we double click, that is a continuous task. So basically all of our normal program will be programmed under this task. But as a recommend from the menu to implement the Modbus TCP server, this AOI, we better create a periodic task. So from here, this task, right click, click a new task. We can create one task that weighs 20 milliseconds. So I will name it this. And here, the period we can set 20 milliseconds and uh, make sure we are selecting this periodic, this task. So that means this task will run every 20 milliseconds. Okay, click OK. And here, let's create the program, program. And under this program, we can create the main program first. So this is the main first. So we can also name it the main program. And then we can create another program that is the actual our model bus slave function. We can call that model bus TCP server. And from this program, we need to call this subroutine here. So we can double click here and type in GSR and select this subroutine. Make sure this periodic task can call this subroutine. And then this is our main meal. Let's jump into this uh, subroutine. So at here, following the menu, from here at this run, we right click, click this uh, import runs, select the Modbus TCP server, that is a slave function. Okay, open. Create this AOI import into this run. Okay. And after this import, from this uh, add-on instruction, it import a loss here. And from this state type, it also import the strings and the user defined UDT here. Okay, let's set some parameter here. So click this uh, server parameters here, right click, click this uh, monitor. And expand here. And we can set the important parameter here. Firstly, this local slot. So this local slot means we need to specify the slot of the local Ethernet IP module. For the complex logics, because the complex logics controller built in the Ethernet IP module. To check out the slot number, if we go back to the Studio 5000, for example, in my case, so my controller now, that is the compact logics. So my controller built in the Ethernet IP port. So that index number here that shows zero. That's why I will leave this local slot as a zero. For this local address, so this is local address, that means we will assign our PLC address to this local address here. And in this case, my controller, the IP address, we can click here and we can set the IP address 192.168.1.101. This is my PLC IP address. So here, this is my PLC address. So I will type in here. So let's click OK. OK, local port 502. By default, the motor bus TCP will use this 502. So we can leave this as a default. In active timeout, we can set 60. OK, that's fine. We can leave as a default. Very simple. We finish this parameter here. So IP address, slot number, and the local port number. OK, so maybe you will ask where the actual data is located. That is this, the server underscore zero one underscore data. So if we go back to the function block side, so here, so we just set the parameter and the Modbus data, they locate here. So server underscore zero one underscore data. If right click, click this monitor. So from here, we can see how we use the Modbus address when we use the function code zero three or 16. So basically within this two function code, we will use the 40,000, this Modbus address, this area. Okay, we will monitor the data around this area. Okay, now let's go back here and to enable this Modbus TCP server function, don't forget we need to change to one. Leave this at one, this will enable this server function here. Okay, now we can download the program, click this communication, Select the controller I have, download. Now it's showing the status waiting. That means 
this server is waiting for the client to set up the connection with this server because we haven't set up the client side, okay? And in this test, I will use the model scan, the common used software to run as a client side. And to download this client software, we can go to the win slash tag the com this website and download the model scan. So if you are using the Windows 7 or Windows 10, you can download this model scan 64. After we download this model scan, this software, so we can double click and it has a trial mode. So it allows us to do some test. It has a 30 day trial. Basically this 30 days, that's enough for us to do some test. Keep in mind that this is client side. So firstly, let's click this uh, connect. We will select if we are using the Modbus TCP or use the Modbus RTU by using the RS-232 or RS-485. In this case, we are using Modbus TCP. And keep in mind, this is the server port I showed from the PLC side, we leave as a default 502. And here we need to type in the server side IP address. And in this case, from this client side, I'm using my laptop and run this model scan. So my PC IP address is 192.168.1.201. So this 201 now is running as a client. So same as this software. And our server side, this is our PLC side. The IP address is 192.168.1.101. Okay. And if we click this protocol selection, so make sure we are selecting this RTU here. Okay. And this slave response timeout, that is two seconds. Okay. If you are using some remote connection, so probably you can expand this value, for example, going up to 5,000 or 10,000 or 10,000, right? Okay. We will leave those as a default here. So very simple setting, select the Modbus TCP server and this IP address, that's it. Click OK. So here it shows alias name. Here the alias name is this. So probably we can set the same at here. So it's showing the same IP address, okay? Okay, now let's click this. Let's use the hex value for the test first. And at here we can select the holding register. So it will shift to the 40,000, this address area by selecting this. Basically, this holding register, they are common used register we will test. And then let's go back to the PLC side. Now this active connection, it shows zero. That means this Modbus TCP server haven't set up the connection with the client. So from this client side, if we click this connect, and now it shows one. So that means this communication we set up Okay, and now if we right click, click this monitor. And if now, if I type in the data, let's select this 03, that is a holding register. If we switched this 03 holding register, this area will automatically select this 40,000, the Modbus address. And now if we double click this, and if I type in, for example, A, B, C, D, this hex number, so as we can see, the data sent to here, the reason why here it doesn't show up, that's because this demo time expired. So I need to restart this software and uh, hook it up again. But if we send the second data, for example, double click this, and let's send one, two, three, four, the hex data. So we can see this hex data also can send to here. It's not reading that's because it shift to the demo mode. Okay, let me restart this model scan. Now it's connected. So this time we can see, so we send ABCD. So ABCD received here, one, two, three, four here, right? If I click the next, so if this time I send, so six, seven, eight, nine, this is all hex number. So it sent here and receive here. And this is the decimal side. If I switch to the hex, so we can see it received correctly. And if now I change this number, for example, switch to the hex here, I change this number here. If I set uh, 5566, so we can see hex 5566 
it received here. And here we can see the only things we need to take care of is, so this mode bus address is start from the one. But from the PLC side, this index start from zero. So it has a one word, this one register off. So we need to take care about this. And from this client side, because this is software, so once we switch to 03, so the sending and the receiving, that is the sharing in this mode bus address. That's why if we send the data to here, that is a hex. So meantime, it will also read back to here. So this is this software function. If we are using one PLC running as a client to send the data or read the data, so when you switch a different function code, for example, 03, or 16, the function code. But this software is very easy. So once we type in the data, it will send. Or once we type in data here, it will automatically read back. Okay, so let's test the integer. So from this number five, if we are using the integer, let's test 6500. And now if I switch to the decimal mode, so this integer, so we can see this six, 6500, it received correctly. Just that address, it got a one address off. It start from the zero here. All right, this is the compact logics model bus TCP server function. So if we recall from here, so once we set up the connection correctly, this active connection will show one here. And once we disconnect this connection, it will show zero. If now I close this software, so we can see once I shut down this software, it will immediately change to zero. So we can use this active connection here to diagnose, to show the connection status. And in the meantime, we can click this uh, controller properties. And let's look at this uh, capacity. And this is the memory this program is using in this controller. And this project is a pure project only run this Modbus TCP server. So this Modbus TCP server, this AOI function block, take around 200-208K bytes. We really need to take care about this. It takes greater than 200K bytes. And in the meantime, we can go to this cyclic task, double click, click this monitor. So we can monitor the scanning time. So roughly this is server, the maximum it will take 1.4 milliseconds. And this Modbus TCP server function block is called under this cyclic 20 milliseconds task. All right, this is the Rockwell Alan Branley Compact Logics running as a Modbus TCP server. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.